Welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look. And today, my target orders finally came in, so I got my brand new Wonder Woman from Death Metal, along with the guitar playing Batman from Death Metal, and I can finally put together the Dark Father, collect the build figure. Finally. <laughs> but, interesting wave, overall, let's just be honest. We'll take a look at the remaining figures that we have. I've already checked out the Robin King, I've already checked out Batman on his Sweet Bant cycle, and the Potato-Headed Superman, which, the sculpt is there on that guy, but, you know, it just really didn't work out. But, in either case, I will say this, that when it comes to Greg Capullo's artwork, I think it translates very nicely to action figure form. However, I will say with Death Metal, I was very excited for it. I was enjoying it up until really the end where it just kind of became a whole bunch of nonsense and it really went nowhere and I'm thoroughly confused on where I stand with future state let's just be honest but in either case let's sit back let's relax let's grab ourselves a nice hot cup of coffee this is a look at the death metal McFarlane toys wave the dark father Batman and Wonder Woman and of course, we'll start things off with the heavy metal, death metal Batman rocking the Plastic Man guitar. Now, no one has ever said, at least from the comic book creator's point that I have seen, that this is actually Plastic Man. I just thought, yeah, it looks like Plastic Man. And I've heard a lot of other people say, yeah, I think you're right. Cool. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's a screaming guitar, death metal scythe thing. It's awesome. But let's go ahead and check it out in full detail. This is a solid red plastic guitar with elements of yellowish green for the tongue, black, orange, yellow here and there. But overall, it's one solid color, especially on the back. But it's, yeah, it's like a big scythe guitar. And it's cool. It's awesome. It's really interesting. And I like the way the Batman can hold it. It's made of a really durable, flexible plastic, so it ain't gonna break on you, nothing like that. If you read Death Metal, or if you're at least familiar with some of the covers for that series, you'd know that, yeah, it comes straight from <laughs> this, basically, Batman jamming out on a giant red Plastic Man guitar. It's missing the chain, though, I will say that. Batman himself, you get the DC Multiverse stand, and this is the exact same Batman that was previously with the big ol' scythe. He does have the Black Lantern ring, so of course, again, I like that. He also has the same exact articulation, skulls and chains for days. I really like his cape duster that he's got going on. He will spin at the thighs, and you can fit him on the bat bike as well. So same exact Batman, just comes with a spiffy new Plastic Man guitar in terms of the wonder woman figure now this one i really was hoping when they first showed the solicits pictures and everything else for this figure i thought man that would be really nice if she came out looking exactly like the photos because sometimes you know things change paint application the sculpt gets lost i'm happy to say this is one of the most gorgeous looking figures i have seen in a while and the face on wonder woman is beautiful it really captures Greg Capullo's artwork quite masterfully. And in terms of her weapon accessories, she comes with her mystical chainsaw, if you want to say it's an invisible chainsaw, kind of like her invisible jet. But in Death Metal, she has an invisible chainsaw because, you know, why not? It's all gold right there. Nice details. Nicely sculpted. Very intricate. Very McFarlane. So in that sense, I like it. Is it exactly accurate to what's seen on the covers and such in the comic book? Not spot on, but I mean, it's close enough, although I really wish it would have had the pull cord that is her lasso. This was used to kill the Batman who laughs and sets off the chain reaction of the entire story of death metal, basically, and everything that transpires or doesn't transpire. However you want to think about that. Flexible plastic. Nice looking, nice colors, nice blues. As far as the Wonder Woman figure, again, very gorgeous looking figure. The face, the crown, the way the hair is, it goes from a really nice hard blue and fades up into the black. And I really dig the way they did that. The cape has this beautiful texture on it. Very McFarlane cape, paint goes every which way. They really did a nice job on this. I really like her big spiked heel boots that would make 
no sense when fighting enemies, but who cares? It's comic books, right? All the sculpted elements of this figure really pop because of the solid paintwork on this. Not really anything is a hiccup. Even the little straps for that keep the skulls on her arms are painted nicely. They're functional and it makes sense. It's not missing or it's mispainted. You get minimal articulation out of the head because of her giant thick piece of hair right here. So left and right, eh, up, down, a little bit better. On the arms, on one side, you're going to run into the, the hair just a bit, right? But on this side, yeah, you'll get to going all the way up. She does have butterfly joints and she does have bicep swivel. It kind of spins. It's kind of hidden right there on the straps of her skull shoulder blade things, whatever you want to say. The ball jointed wrists are hidden at the top below. You can kind of notice them a bit more, but really they're, they're functional, they work, and they are really kind of hidden more so than seen in certain poses. As far as her abdomen and ab crunch, everything else, there seems to be something underneath this rubber overlay right here. It doesn't really do much because the overlay is very, very thick. So you can kind of hear it you can't really do anything with it, or at least I couldn't find myself doing anything with it. She'll do the splits, she'll kick out, she's got nice legs, legs that make sense, right? Instead of the poles kind of thing, pole legs. From the movie, figure, really nice. Ankle, rocker, it'll go back and forth, toe articulation. So, really nicely designed Wonder Woman, real nice articulation for what I'm looking for. Now, she only has one set of hands, and that's where this figure kind of falters just a little bit because she does have like a trigger holding hand, but it works in terms of the chainsaw. On this hand though, she has a fisted hand. And while I would love for Wonder Woman to have fisted hand, you know, punching, kicking, whatever you want to do, right? She can't hold the other half of the chainsaw. So it's not a really naturalistic pose. It's a bit of a nitpick in the sense. However, I have said this over and over, extra hands when it makes sense really help in displayability for action figures. Which finally brings us to the Dark Father, the Dark Side Batman, whatever you want to call him. He's just a big, hulking, tall dude that was Batman and he became Dark Side. There's not much to this guy, don't overthink it. But the figure is really cool. I really like the way that this came out. And for some of you who are wondering, yes, he fits together much better than the Bane figure. No wrists are falling out, nothing like that. No legs are popping off, so much better. The texture of the cape really makes sense in the terms of going to Apocalypse and having a very much like a burned sort of cape. It's awesome, just feeling it. You'll, you'll know what I'm saying. The cowl, the scowl on his face, the way the lip is painted underneath on the craggy skin, darker than the rest of his face. It's very cool. I really like the way that this guy came out. The bat symbol is interesting. This little flappy part of the bat symbol, it's weird. I mean, I guess it serves a purpose because otherwise if they sculpted it on, you'd be moving around. It wouldn't go with it. So it's odd. It doesn't bother me, but it's just like a little odd little like tail kind of thing for the Batman. And he doesn't have butterflies, but he's got some nice articulation in the arms. He does have bicep swivel, although on both sides, it is very stuck. And that's something I've noticed recently with some McFarlane toys. The bicep swivel on bigger figures and the bigger arms tend to get stuck. He's got single jointed elbows. He's got rose bushes, basically, for gauntlets on his arms. Move that around and tell me what happens, right? When you get your fingers, not even joking. And he'll spin at the wrists, all the ball jointed wrists. You do get a semblance of, well, let's just say upper diaphragm with waist. Not so much ab crunch really at all. He'll kind of go back more than forward. He's got this soft piece right here in the crotch where the belt and his underoos are. Mine, he's got a little bit of ball slippage right there. You kind of have to move it over from time to time, but the legs work nicely with it. He's got double jointed knees. I really like the way the boots look. Just the overall textures that they achieve on these is really nice. It's very different from a lot of modern action figures that you see. It just gives you a little extra something to look at. Ball jointed feet, toe articulation. It's a solid Dark Father figure. And if you were wondering, one of the things that I tend to point out with McFarlane Toys ever since they started with DC Multiverse was the height and the scaling with one another. And I can honestly tell you that because all three of these go together, from the storyline, I would say that the height is actually spot on. I see 
Wonder Woman and Superman being in relative height, and Batman being the smaller type character compared to these more godlike, super heroic type people. So it works in that sense. Wonder Woman, of course, just because of her crown, kind of puts her over the top and a little bit taller, but the body types for all of them are solid. The looks, minus Superman's face, I think that they nailed it in terms of really capturing everything that you see within the Death Metal comic book. And if you were wondering, just to kind of compare the two, the Batman with the guitar, the Batman with the scythe, same exact figure, same exact articulation, one's got one accessory, One's got the other, but in either case, you can fit whichever one you purchase, or if you purchase both, onto that sweet bat cycle. To show some comparisons, here he is with a new Spawn Clown figure, Shriek from Batman Beyond, and a Marvel Legends Stan Lee. In terms of the Dark Father and Superman, these two go together quite well. If you're not familiar, again, Dark Father, in the context and the wackiness of death metal, let's just say this, he did what he did to Superman, and that's why Superman has like the stone craggy arm and yada yada. One thing I think that the Dark Father is missing though is his little gun that he shoots Batman with in the storyline. That would have been a really nice accessory to have for him, just to add a little something to the figure. And just for scaling purposes and for fun, here he is next to a Super 7 Mutagen Man while we have Wonder Woman here with a Diamond Select Spider-Man. And because the height comparisons are getting out of control, I got you covered. Here she is with some Happy Meal McDonald's French fries and Burger Transformers. Whatever, right? This is an overall pretty interesting solid wave-ish. I would say that you got a lot of great things going on here. And when you have them all on display, yeah, they're going to make quite the presence on your shelf. However, there's a few things missing. Like with Batman... I mean, I really would have liked to have seen extra hands, battering, something like that, just to include maybe a little power effect for his black lantern ring, something like that. I think the weakest of the bunch is the Robin King because he's just very off model. He's got a lot of great things going for him, but overall, he just is kind of like, yeah, okay, he, he's okay. Same thing with the Superman. Really like the body type that they got going on, but he's got quite the potato face. And I know that the sculpt is there, but I just don't think that in the painting process and putting him together, it really translated all that well. Wonder Woman, however, is one of my top favorites of the line. She's gorgeous. Great paint on her. Excellent all around. Just a couple nitpicks with hands and such. The Bat Bike with Batman looks like it drove straight out of the comic book. This is an amazing set and just something that is so cool to have on your shelf. Then finally completing the Dark Father, put the collective build figure together. He's awesome. He's one of my favorite obscure wackadoo Batman figures and the articulation really fits him. Overall, pretty cool. I definitely dig it. Nice things, couple hiccups here and there. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything McFarlane Toys. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, help me out here. What's something I need to read now from the new future state and everything else going forward after Death Metal for DC Comics? What's your recommendations? I'm curious because I want to read something. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.